Hey guys, it's Goosebumps Completionist, and today I'm bringing you a, another book versus episode from the original 62 to the uh, classic Goosebumps TV show. And we're going to be discussing the Cuckoo Clock of Doom book. And since I don't have the episode, since there's no physical release, I'll be overlaying an image here. And the episode. Now the book, I gave a 4.5 out of 5. Really solid book. A tier book. Lots of fun to be had. One of my, it would be a big, big time favorite of mine if it had a little more going for it, but it's a really solid book. And then the episode I gave a 4.2 out of 5, really solid episode for what it is. Um, it is one of the wonkier season one episodes, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, very good episode still. So in the book versus episodes... We like to go over characters, we like to go over the overall plot, the atmosphere, um, those, maybe the aesthetics sometimes, you know, if I feel like discussing the aesthetics. Um, but mainly we'll be discussing, the, you know, the characters, the plot, the atmosphere, the climax, and the ending, okay? So, in the Cuckoo Clock of Doom, the main character is named Michael, so I guess we'll go off with Michael here. Um, in the episode, I think Michael was pretty well portrayed. Um, nothing really to complain about, but if I had a preference for Michael, I would give the edge to the book. I really enjoyed Michael in the book. I, I felt more sympathy for Michael. Even though Tara was arguably more awful, and I'll, just get, into, I'll get into Tara in just a sec, she feels more diabolical in the episode, surprisingly, even though we got a little bit less context with her. I think Michael in the book is still more sympathetic, and I resonate with Michael in the book just a little bit more. So I'll give the edge to Michael here. Next up, okay, now we'll get into Tara. Now Tara in the in the book is still a little brat. I mean, she's awful. She's called Tara, what is it, Tara the Terror? Tara the Terrible? I mean, whatever you want to call her. Tara is a little weasel <laughs> in the book. The episode, she gets... She goes to places with fake blood, and, and that actually got to me a little bit in the in the part one. I've seen this episode a couple times, and every time I watch this, the blood part, it gets to me a little bit, because blood makes me a little squeamish. So, I actually think that the episode of Tara has a, a, a more darker context to her, even though we don't get as much context of her as the book. I like the darker context more, so I'm going to give the edge to Tara to the episode yeah she rocked she re she really good job um now the parents mr webster mrs webster i guess we should only care about mr webster really um i'm gonna give the edge to the episode he seemed more angrier in the episode than the book he seemed more like a like a jovial dad <laughs> in the book as in the episode he seemed more angry and uh he seemed more I don't know, dominant in the family. So in that respect, I like Mr. Webster more. And I guess Mrs. Webster would also go to, I, I don't know, I guess the book. I, I don't know about her. Um, but let's get into the cuckoo clock. The, the whole object-focused character of the story. Which one did I prefer? Well, the cuckoo clock does have its things, like the cover here. I mean, you guess you can apply how the cuckoo clock would look. Even though I think that the description isn't quite what it's described in the book as on the cover. Like, like I think it's still different. Um, but the, the cuckoo clock in the episode was really good. The, the bird they used was really scary. I guess it comes, it comes down to uh, visuals here. Um, the This is an iconic cover. Don't get me wrong. Um, the episode it also has a, a creepy bird. But I'm probably going to put them deadlocked. Cuckoo Clock's about deadlocked. Um, there's not enough. I mean, there's a lot more about the Cuckoo Clock I like in the book with thoughts of the of the maker of the clock. But outside of that, it's really the same thing. So, And I guess if we're going to get into the Clockmaker mention, the Clockmaker has a lot more interesting things in the book, even though I don't think we ever meet the Clockmaker. He's mentioned. So I guess I'll give it to the book for that. Okay. Whew. All right, so let's get into the overall plot. Which one did I prefer? Well, the episode is very condensed, like most episodes are. Skimming the surface, changing some details, 
uh, kind of messing some stuff up in the beginning, like I brought up in my episode review. I do not like how they change the events from the book. As in the okay, so the book, it goes from the dad brings home the cuckoo clock, then Tara pranks Michael, then Michael triggers his flashback, and then it cuts to present time where he gets the idea to mess with the cuckoo clock to frame Tara to get her in trouble, and then the rest of the story plays out. The episode kind of muddles the the events of the book up in the beginning and it also cuts out I, i'm pretty sure it cuts out something from the book where an extra stage where michael goes back i think it cuts out one of them it, despite that the episode does its job in the in the core premise but the overall plot i have to give it to the episode i um, not the episode the book not the episode i give it to the book <laughs> i i give it to the book because there's a lot more added exposition to the cuckoo clock. Like, what, what is it like? Is is the the highest number like supposed to be where time ends or something? That's a lot of thought provoking stuff. Like, can you use this cuckoo clock to uh, maybe save the human race or something? Can you eliminate a disastrous year? There's a lot of things that could be thought. Like, the the whole thought of if if something could be erased like an entire year using the cuckoo clock imagine if you can erase an entire sequence of years that killed millions of people or something like that there's a lot of interesting ideas with the book and i think the overall plot is done way better in the book no offense to dan angel and billy brown who adapted it in the episode i have to give it to the book um so now we're going to get into atmosphere atmosphere which one sold me all right so the time travel mechanism is prevalent in this um Time travel is probably used the most unique in this, as in, you know, Night and Terror Tower and Vampire Breath. They're used to time travel to, to a specific setting. As in, the time travel in this story is used as kind of a countdown to a potential fate of the character. So there's stakes involved in the story either way you go. The, the, the idea of going out of existence, getting quote-unquote quantum aborted <laughs> out of time... That is the craziest thought, right? And both really sell that atmosphere of stakes, of the fear of being written out of existence. Um, it's essentially the same thing. So I'm going to put them on deadlocked here. They're really good at capturing that. The episode, despite its budget, really does that. Um, the, the dream sequence is another, is another thing I can tie into atmosphere, right? Um, the, there's a dream sequence that happens in the book that kind of ties back to Michael's birthday. But in the episode, it kind of ties to him being tormented by Terra, even in his nightmares. Like it's supposed to, it's supposed to show you that throughout time, like no matter how far back he can go in time, he's always going to be pestered by Terra or like worrying about Terra. You know, the atmosphere is there, so that's why they're even. So yeah, there you go. All right, so let's get into the climax. So the climax, I guess, in this book would be. Um, multiple stages where he has to you know it's a couple fake out but i guess the real climax is when he's an infant and he has to go to the antique store it more or less plays out the same so i'll give it about a deadlock where he has to revert back time to get him back to the present it's about even i would say really it's it's the same thing essentially but the ending this is the most intriguing part about this so let's talk about the episode first so the ending in the episode Shoots Michael back to the day after um, his dad brought home the cuckoo clock. And he's messing with it. And his father scolds him. And he's like, oh, th I'm thankful to see you, Dad. Now, where's Tara? And they're like, who's Tara? And Michael is then explained to his dad by his dad that one of the dates or something is missing, potentially. And Michael then realizes what happened to Tara. Or Michael already kind of knew what happened to Tara. Um, before that happened as in the book it shoots Michael when he when he turns the cuckoo clock's head back it takes him back to his 12th birthday and Michael's wondering why Tara isn't around but he hasn't really come to that conclusion yet until his father he has to wait a couple of days until his father brings home the cuckoo clock and then he realizes oh crap I <laughs> got rid of Tara I need to I need to figure out how to fix this right so with that, I, I think for Michael's overall story, I found more satisfaction in the book. 
than the episode. I think Michael had a, you know, a few days to ponder, maybe like, why is Tara not here? And I feel like that exploration kind of helped him in the end. And I feel like, I feel like he, he, he's still the same type of Michael in the episode where he's like, yeah, I'm not in any hurry to go back to get Tara. But I think he's a little more remorseful. And I think he's, I think he realizes that, you know, the, no, no matter, he's going to try to, you know, get some time off from her, I guess, no matter what. But I think in the book, he wants to go back. And maybe, just maybe, he can have leverage using the clock moving forward. This, this is why I would want a sequel, because the book's ending is so well done. I think a sequel would be great for something like this. Um, so for the ending, I think I'm going to give the edge to the book. So, do we have a clear winner here? Um, yeah, I think I do. Um, I think I'm going to have to give uh, the edge. Which one's better, the book or the episode? I'm going to give the edge to the book for Cuckoo Clock of Doom. I think the book is better. Um, and it's a little more than a hair. They're, they're kind of evenly matched here and there. But when it comes down to my deciding factor, I think the ending just sells me a little more. Um, the extra context about the clock and then Michael overall does it for me but don't get me wrong i love a lot of things about the episode like the, the blood stuff and tarot's a little more darker so it has its give and takes but i prefer the book if it was me so yeah that's my thoughts on the cuckoo clock of doom let me know down in the comment section which one do you prefer do you prefer the book or do you prefer the episode i'm dying to know and i'll see you next time